My name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. IT professionals often find themselves in a situation where Windows will not boot on the laptop, tablet, PC, and they're wanting to begin to start repairing. Do not do this. First, get a copy of the user data and their files off that PC before you begin. Many times attempts to repair the PC or the laptop actually further damage the operating system and make the recovery of data even more critical. You do not want to face that user and tell them you've lost all of their data. That will not be a good day for you. I wish I could tell you that it's just simple. Uh, we do step one, two, and three, and we're done. It's just not. PC ecosystem is complex, and so we have given you lots of additional options you can do in our video notes found in the video description. You can go to most of our videos on YouTube and go to the show more section of each video and scroll down till you get the section of links to documentations. And you can use them to help if what I am sharing isn't working for your particular situation. Our channel takes Savvy Productions is all about supporting the technically inclined user, the IT student, and the IT pro. And I've got a number of resources up here that we have in our channel. One is Create Windows 10 ISO. My son Nathan shows you how to create that Windows 10 flash drive. Because Windows recovery environment can be challenging, you can also look at the Windows 10 boot failure. It gives you many ways to get into Windows recovery, which will help you get your files off the PC. Then in video three, we have the Windows 10 startup problems. That can help you start solving the problems, but don't go there until you first get the user data off. Some additional resources we have is called Windows 10 Startup. I do a detailed dive into how Windows 10 boots and tools and steps to solve a wide variety of problems in the boot. Then how to boot Windows into safe mode. This is all about Windows startup settings. Last of all, the video notes. You can go to our video description, download the video notes. The notes are designed into topics to help you just drill into the area that you need. There are a couple of ways to get data off PCs and laptops. One is to boot to a Windows 10 flash drive, and we're going to show you that process. You can also use a bootable Linux flash drive, and I'm going to also show you that as an alternative method. In many cases, using the Linux boot flash drive to get the data off, then you can go back and use your Windows 10 flash drive to start the repair process. So what about flash drives? I recommend getting at least two 60 gig USB 3.0 flash drives. They're faster, you got plenty of space because you never know how much data the user has. The users usually don't know exactly how much data they have. So you could find yourself with a laptop with 20 gigs of data on it. If you feel like there's more than 20 gigs, I'd get an external hard drive. Make sure it's a 3.0 interface. It just allows copying much faster. You can pick up a Western Digital 5 terabyte on Amazon for a little over $100. Make sure you check the device and see what type of USB ports they have. A lot of the newer laptops have only Type-C, so you'll have to get flash drives with Type-C or some kind of dongle or adapter. So check those USB ports. You can create bootable flash drives for Windows 7, 8.1, and, Win and Windows 10. And there's the instructions there on the video notes. Now, one of our first problems is, does the PC laptop boot up using UEFI and GPT process, or is it the old style BIOS and the master boot record? Depending on those, you may have to create flash drives with one or the other format. I encourage you to create both so that you have a Windows 10 boot flash drive with UEF, GPT. You also have a BIOS MBR. In 
the video notes, I will show you how to use Rufus, a utility that creates flash drives, and it will step you through how to create both of these flash drives. I encourage you to have both of them because if you deal with older laptops and PCs, you'll probably need the BIOS MBR. Now your next challenge is how to get into the either the boot menu or the actual firmware of the device. So you can determine, is it UEFI? Is it BIOS MBR? Does it have fast startup? Does it have secure boot enabled? All those questions you need to answer as you're moving forward. In the section six of our video notes, we'll have a lot of different ideas and helps that can help you if you get stuck or what I am showing doesn't work for your situation. Now, most PC vendors have two important hotkeys. One that accesses the BIOS menu, the actual firmware, and the other one displays a boot menu. So you can not boot to the internal hard drive, but you can actually boot to a flash drive, etc. I've got a list of those in the notes and I'll throw a few of those on the slide. You can try those out and see if that will get you to the menus that you need to see. Again, if you don't see what you need in the slide, go download our video notes. You'll probably see something in there. Here I'm booting up my Toshiba laptop. I'm powering it up and then I'm hitting F12 to get to the boot menu. Everyone's a little bit different. And you can see I can also go down to enter setup. So that gives me also an access into the main firmware. Then you want to navigate typically to the boot section of your menu option. And there you can disable things like secure boot, fast boot, and then of course save on exit. Most PCs and laptops, especially enterprise, are simply, they don't even want you to alter the boot process. They want to boot to that internal hard drive and that's it. So we've got to change that boot process. So that's going to be one of our first jobs. This is more more of a retail firmware. This is something that you'll see typically with a more enterprise desktop or laptop. Here's another one. All these vendors who create PCs, tablets, and laptops, there's no agreed procedure on accessing the firmware or the boot menu. And there's also no standardized interface for the firmware. So they're all different. You have to go looking for these items about changing the boot order, disabling fast boot. All of these things can be really challenging. Today, everybody wants a fast booting PC. They want their windows to pop up in microseconds. So one of the things we may have to do is disable fast boot because you can't even get to a hotkey to, to interrupt the process, the boot process, and Windows is already booted. So one of the first things you may have to do is disable fast boot. Here's an example in firmware where you see the actual fast boot option. You can just disable that and it boots up slower. You can get to the hotkeys and it's a lot easier to work on. Some additional resources for you. One is we did a video on secure boot in Windows 10. I encourage you to check that out. If you find that secure boot is on, that will cause problems as you try to work with this non-booting PC or laptop. Also, if you're not familiar with UEF and understanding what's going on, we've got a great video on UEFI Explained and it really focuses around Windows 10. Now, when you boot on a flash drive that has Windows 10 installation on it, you're gonna to get to the menu section that looks like you're going to install Windows. We are not gonna install Windows. We're actually trying to get to the Windows recovery. So we're gonna choose next. And once we get to this menu option, we're going to choose repair your computer. Now we are in what's known as the blue screen of life. And the reason it's the blue screen of life is because it's where we can bring life back to this PC. You're going to go ahead and click troubleshoot, reset this PC or see advanced options. Now keep in mind, we're not going to fix anything. We're trying to get their data off. So we're going to choose command prompt. We now have a command prompt open. We're going to type in notepad and notepad is going to launch. We're now going to go to file and open and we're going to get a little mini graphic explorer. And with this little mini graphic explorer, you can actually drill down into C drive, into windows, into users and begin to find the folder that you need to get the data out. You can use the send to command and copy that off to another flash drive, an external hard drive, or the, the, the flash drive that you use to boot to if you have enough space on it. Now keep in mind when you do this send to, your interface is going to lock up until all of those files are copied over and then it will give you access to the menu again. And then you can pick another folder and send to again. But each time it's doing the copying, the interface will kind of freeze up and lock up. Don't panic let it copy the files. So here I've booted my PC into Windows 10 installation flash drive. I'm going to go ahead and ignore the installation and just hit next. And then I'm going to go repair now. And it's going to give me the blue screen of life. And we're going to go to troubleshoot. And here we're just going to remember we're at we're going to get the files off the computer. So we're going to hit the command prompt. And then I'm going to type in notepad. Then we're going to go file open 
and this mini graphical user interface, we're going to go this PC, allows us to navigate. So we're going to go C Drive, and I'm going to go to Users, where my profiles are. This is 90% where your user data is going to be. And I'm going to look for the profile of the user that I'm trying to rescue their data. In this case, John. And then choose whatever folder I want to, and then send to. And in this case, you would have a flash drive showing up here. And off you go. All right, Mr. Vanderpool, it didn't work for me. Don't panic. Go back to the video notes. Remember, there's a lot of great information on alternative options for you. Now, one of my favorite go-to tools to get data off of a PC or laptop is simply a Ubuntu bootable flash drive. And here I'm booting my PC with a Ubuntu bootable disk. And we're going to choose Try Without Installing. And we'll wait till it boots. Yes, we love to watch PCs boot. And I get into the graphical user interface. There's a folder there on the desktop. Open that up. I'm going to drill down into other locations. Here I can see my 136 gig hard drive. I'm going to go over to users, again, my profile, and then find John. Open up John and find the desktop, the documents, the music, the pictures. And again, right mouse click. I have move to, copy to, the same kinds of features that I found in Windows 10. Ubuntu has a rich set of driver support, so it will boot just about everything. Most versions of Linux distros have a feature called Live. In other words, you can simply boot the Linux flash drive into memory, play with it. It gives you a graphical user interface, allows you to easily drill down and find the files on the hard drive and move them off to a flash drive or an external hard drive. I like Ubuntu because it has a wealth of hardware driver support. Most video drivers are stable on Ubuntu. The problem is if you have an older laptop and an older PC because of the CPU and the amount of memory, it may be really slow and sluggish. Then I would encourage you to look at some lightweight Linux versions. Linux Lite, Peppermint, Slack, Zeno, and other elementary OS. And I'll demonstrate some of those at the end of the video. Most Linux versions will allow you to install a second flash drive if you feel like there's so much user data that you need more storage space. Here you see I've added, I've got Peppermint Linux running and I've added a second hard drive and you can see it showing up under devices. So I've got an extra storage if I need more space for the user data. If you need additional help on Ubuntu or other versions of Linux, check out our notes in addition to what we're covering in this video. Now I'm booting Linux Lite. This was the slowest booting of all the Linux Lite versions, and it could be because it was in a VM. Not all versions of Linux like virtual machines. We're waiting for the desktop to show up. It's got a nice user interface. It's friendly, it's easy to use. This might be a very good version of Linux to rescue data. This is Zorin Linux. It booted very fast. It had no trouble booting in a virtual machine. Has a nice interface, very colorful, very friendly, very usable. Now this is Slack Linux. Now all these virtual machines had like two gigs of memory, one CPU, so they were definitely made to represent a slow PC. Had a nice interface, clean, easy to use. Now this is Puppy Linux, very fast booting, very nice. Had no problem with a virtual machine. Again, a nice user interface, very easy to use. Not sure of the exact pronunciation of this particular version of Linux, but it boots up very sweet, very nice, very light, very fast, has a nice, friendly user environment, and you're ready to go. Thank mm -hmm. you.